How do you write a discussion section of a research paper? Hi, my name is Fabian Pröse. In this video, I will tell you how. Let me begin by talking about some of the background information of a discussion section. In my opinion, the discussion section is probably the most intellectually challenging and also value-adding section of a paper. Like the introduction, this section can easily make or break your paper. Unfortunately, this section is often the weakest and many papers get rejected because of the lack of theoretical contributions. In a discussion section, uh, I think it would be good if you think of the following questions. Your discussion section should be able to answer these questions. First, how do your findings relate to previous research? Second, how do your findings change the current picture or our understanding of the current situation? And then third, what are the potential limitations and what future studies could do to address these limitations? How to write your discussion section? Essentially, you could say there are two different types of discussion section. Type 1 would be a discussion with many organized subsections. And then maybe you could also add a conclusion section at the end. Type 2 is also labeled as such sometimes as a conclusion or long conclusion, where you include similar components but put this into one uh, section. Let me now go into more detail into each of these types. Starting with type 1. In type 1, where you have a discussion with dedicated subsection, you would first label this section with discussion. This will be followed by a brief summary, let's say half a page, maybe one page, where you summarize your key findings, you know, the findings that are related to research questions or the findings that are related uh, to your hypotheses. And then you would add three different subsections. For each subsection, you have a title, uh, a title for that uh, section. The first uh, section, subsection that would usually follow would be about theoretical contribution. This would be by far the most important subsection within the discussion. Here, very often you would start, this study makes the following three contributions first, and then uh, you would uh, elaborate on your theoretical contributions. How do you extend our understanding? How you do you increase or challenge common understandings? Yeah, that would be very important in this section on theoretic contribution. The next subsection would be then the managerial implications. What are the implications for managers, for companies, or maybe also for governments and so forth? Yeah, there you would uh, uh, highlight uh, and summarize your key managerial implications. These implications should be closely tied to your findings. And then uh, you have the next subsection on limitations and future research directions. There you would start with this study has certain limitations, blah, blah, blah. Most studies have uh, certain limitations. And then you would also somewhat justify or defend these limitations. And based on the existing limitation in your study, you would also propose ideas for future research. Then in most cases, you would add a very brief conclusion section. It's a separate section and carries the title conclusions. That's a very, typically very brief, half a page, maximum uh, one page. And then we have type two discussion section. It can be called discussion or conclusion or discussion in conclusion. The structure is somewhat related to the other one, yet very often we do not have subtitles. Sometimes also this long conclusion can be somewhat shorter. Uh, maybe two, three or four pages long. But no matter, 
you would still need to include these different components, yeah, meaning what are the theoretical contributions, what are the managerial implications, and then also limitation future research directions. Yeah, but typically we would not label these, but they should be somewhat included. Which type should you use? Yeah, that very much depends on your target journal uh, and also your field uh, of study. Uh, so in management journals, type 1, if it's quantitative, would be fairly common. If it's a qualitative study, type 2 is also fairly common. Or if it's a finance paper, also type 2 would be uh, uh, very common. Then I think what would be also interesting to note, how long should these sections be? Remember, I had a video on the structure of a, of a research paper. I gave you some rough ideas. Yeah, let's say three to six, seven pages would be the typical length of a discussion section. For type one, now let us put this also into relation. The, th the first part, the brief summary would be short, maybe just half a page. Then the theoretic contribution would be the most important one. So you would spend the most time and also the most space for it. So that could be easily two or three pages long. The managerial implications, of course, they're important, but for research papers in major journals, that's not so important. Yeah, you may say, oh, that's a pity, yeah, but that's the way it is. So it can be brief, maybe one page. And then the limitation of future research action can be also maybe one, one page roughly, give or take. The type two papers, long conclusions, now they can be maybe three, four pages that would be a typical length, or maybe also shorter, uh, one or two papers if it's more in the finance area. Now, let me give you some tips on how to write a good discussion section. What should you do? What should you not do? The do's and don'ts of writing a discussion section. Let me start with the don'ts. Don't do that. Try to avoid that. What I see quite often in discussion sections is that some authors, they repeat the findings as contributions. Now, when it, the title says theoretical contributions, what I read is simply a summary, a repetition of the findings. We already know that. That is not contribution. That's simply a summary or a repetition. What would be better to do is there uh, that you explain how your findings enhance our understanding of a theory. How do they challenge conventional wisdom? How do they add new knowledge, these findings, yeah, in vis-a-vis -vis the accent uh, literature? Okay, another point what I sometimes see is uh, that the authors suddenly introduce completely new theories. Wow! Where does that come from? Or completely new points were not mentioned in the front part, were barely mentioned maybe in the results section, and suddenly they pop up. This leaves the impression that the paper was poorly designed, poorly done. That's not a good impression you want to leave. So don't do that. Or this can happen. You conduct a qualitative study and something completely new emerged, and then you would like to mention the discussion. Better so that you rewrite part of your finding section and then the discussion section. Because that's also the beauty of qualitative study, that new great findings emerge. Okay, do this, yeah, but then change also the front part of your paper accordingly. And then you have a great and consistent story. One problem I sometimes see is that some authors are very, let's call them optimistic, yeah, they make these big claims. Oh, wow, I've changed the world, this and that. Yeah, but not with your study, not with my study. Yeah, so be modest, humble. I would say particularly European and some Asian scholars are very critical towards these big claims. Yeah, so try to humble it down a bit. Another problem also, it's all too human, is and that at the end of the paper, the discussion section, we get tired. Yeah? And also you write the paper from beginning to the end. You spend maybe all your time in introduction in the front part and maybe methods results section. And then you want to quickly write it up, quickly finish that thing. 
that's not the way how it should be. Yeah, and as a reviewer, as the reader, you can easily read that. Yeah? That's a quickly and poorly written discussion. And don't do that. It's quite the contrary. The introduction and discussion sections are the most important sections. Yeah, they make or break your paper. So spend a lot of time on the discussion. Make it very solid and very convincing. And then you can submit your paper. So far, I've talked about common mistakes, the don'ts. Now, let me talk about the do's. Recommendation on how to write a discussion section. I already gave you some impressions of the don'ts and how these can be converted into better ways. Yeah, now, some more general ideas. What would be good to think of in a discussion section? First of all, as I already mentioned, there are different types of discussions. And you would write a discussion that pleases the authors, uh, reviewers and readers of a certain journal. So very simple. Look at that journal. How are discussions written in that journal? And then maybe you need to adapt. What is also very important is in a discussion section, it sounds super obvious, but still some people forget about that. Discuss, yeah, discussion, discuss the findings vis-a-vis -vis the extant literature. Yeah, you're communicating with the literature and the people who have written these pieces. Yeah, it's a discussion. Imagine you're sitting there and you talk and in the paper you discuss uh, with these other sources such as journals and books. In the discussion section also it's important uh, that you highlight and focus on the most intriguing and novel contributions. Of course, a study can also confirm many hypotheses, common knowledge and wisdom and so forth, we can mention that yeah, if it makes a good story. But the focus should clearly be on your new and intriguing contributions. Uh, you might have seen my video on the structure of a research paper. I think one element I would like uh, to, to mention here again is the analogy uh, with the hourglass. Yeah, and the point that I'm here I would like to make is that the introduction and the discussion, they should match. It's a perfect puzzle match. Uh, so uh, the things you steer up in the beginning, these big ideas, then it's very narrow, you discuss all the details uh, in, the, in the methods, results section and so forth. But in the discussion, you try to give the big picture again. What are the more broader implications and consequences? More practically, you should be able to read the introduction and the discussion only, and they should perfectly mesh. In the introduction, you would write about the topic, what it is about, and in particular, about your expected contributions. I would recommend you uh, number these expected contributions, first, second, third. In the discussion section later on, you should be able uh, then to elaborate on these expected contributions. Again, I would recommend numbering the first, second and third. Yeah? And then, maybe in the conclusion particular or also as part of the discussion, give us the big picture, the more broader consequences. Now, let me conclude this video. The discussion section is probably the most challenging part of a research paper. Particularly, you need to use your brain, your brain power, so it's intellectually challenging. The most important aspect of this uh, discussion section is that you highlight your main theoretical contribution. That will make or break your paper. Okay, I hope that video was helpful. I wish you good luck with your paper. That's it for today. Bye-bye.